Hello friends, in my previous two videos, I discussed about mode of action of cholinotoxin and diphtheria toxin. In this video, I am going to focus on tetanus toxin. We know that this is also an example of exotoxin, uh, which is produced by the bacterium Clostridium titani uh, inside the deep wound under the anaerobic condition. Uh, this is one of the most potent neurotoxin after botulinum toxin. The tetanus toxin having little dose 50 value 2.5 to 3 nanogram per kg in rats. That means uh, to kill 50% test rats, 2.5 to 3 nanogram of dose of this toxin is sufficient. Actually, these tests are conducted on rats, so the value may vary when we consider humans. Uh, the toxin is also called as spasmogenic toxin because it induces spastic shocks. Uh, in this lecture, I am going to focus on the structure of this toxin and its mode of action. Now, uh, in the structure, we know that the toxin having uh, 150 kilodalton molecular weight uh, polypeptide chain, the toxin having two subunit, B subunit and A subunit. The B subunit of the toxin is called as heavy chain with a molecular weight 100 kilodalton, while A subunit of the toxin is called light chain with molecular weight 50 kilodalton. The B subunit of the toxin having two different components. The first part of the B subunit is called EHC. Uh, it is having molecular weight 50 kilodalton, and this part is responsible for binding of the toxin to the neurons uh, on the membrane. Now, the second part of the uh, B subunit is called HN. Uh, this part also having 50 kilodalton molecular weight, and this part is responsible for translocation of the, uh, this toxin inside the neurons. Uh, the A subunit is attached to the B subunit by a disulfide bond and this disulfide bond get reduced inside the neurons uh, at the time of action of this toxin. The last part of the toxin is A part or A subunit. Uh, it is called a light chain with a molecular weight 50 kilodalton and actual toxicity of this tetanus toxin is related to the A part or A subunit of this toxin because this A subunit having proteolytic activity. Now we are going to focus on mode of action of this uh, tetanus toxin. Actually, in normal condition when toxin is absent in the body, uh, the central nervous system sends signal of relaxation uh, to the muscles by using uh, some inhibitory neurotransmitters. These are the chemicals or transmitters which is responsible for relaxation of the muscle. This inhibitory chemical uh, neurotransmitter include GABA or glycine. Uh, this uh, uh, generally release from presynaptic neuron and then after release uh, they bind to the postsynaptic neuron on a special receptor. After binding of this uh, neurotransmitter uh, to the post synaptic neuron, the signal of relaxation is uh, passes which lead to relaxation of the muscle. But when in the affected condition, uh, the bacteria Clostridium titani produce the tetanus toxin inside the deep wound, this toxin first travels through the tissue space and then reach to the uh, lymphatic and vascular system. Then from lymphatic and vascular system, this toxin uh, get entry inside the peripheral nervous system neuron through synaptic junction. And then when this toxin enters into the peripheral nervous system, it migrates towards central nervous system um, by the process called retrograde axonal transport. We know that neurons are generally longest cells in the body and the transport of the molecules or organelles by inside the neuron, uh, retrograde axonal transport is used. When this toxin uh, reach to the central nervous system from peripheral nervous system, uh, the action of the toxin is started. Now, in the first step, the toxin bound, bound on the negatively charged membrane of presynaptic neuron. After the binding, the toxin migrate and get entry inside the neuron uh, by the process called receptor mediated endocytosis. Uh, due to this process, the toxin get entry into the neuron and a vesicle is produced called endosome. The endosome contains both the subunit of toxin, that means B subunit and A subunit. Now, this endosome migrate into the presynaptic neurons and then uh, when they reach at the end of the neuron, 
the toxin come out from the endosome and then uh, travel and get attached to the post synaptic neuron. This transport is carried out through synaptic junctions. When this toxin bound to the post synaptic neuron, it again uh, and get entry into the post synaptic neuron by the same process that is receptor mediated endocytosis. Now, in the post synaptic neuron, and the toxin is present in the endosome, then due to the hydrogen ion pumping into the endosome, the pH of the uh, vesicle changed, ion channels are produced, and through these ion channels, the A circuit come out of the endosome. Here you can see the A circuit reached, while B circuit remains inside the endosome, inside post synaptic neuron. When this A circuit uh, is present in the cytoplasm of the post synaptic neuron, it exerts its uh, proteolytic activity and attacks the receptors of GABA or glycine. Once this A subunit of the toxin blocks the receptor of GABA and glycine, the, this inhibitory neurotransmitter no longer able to bind to the post synaptic neuron. And due to the absence of this inhibitory neurotransmitter, there is no signal of relaxation uh, occur and uh, the muscles in the affected person remain in contracted form uh, which lead to a disease called tetanus. Now, uh, due to the blockage of the neurotransmitter uh, in the body by this toxin, uh, symptoms uh, occur like locked jaws, uh, then uh, spastic shock and ultimately due to failure of uh, respiratory system, uh, the death occur. Now, there is a no reported cure, effective cure of this disease and only immune system is unable to fight against this toxin because of its potency. Uh, the person have to take repeated dose of uh, vaccines to prevent the disease. The vaccine contain toxoid or uh, inactivated toxin and due to the toxoid, uh, the immune system get boosted and the person is, uh, can uh, avoid the disease condition after the frequent uh, dose of vaccination. So in the today's lecture, we discuss about structure of this toxin and uh, mode of action of tetanus toxin. Thank you.